This little machine, this one right here, that I can hold in my hands has more power than a base Mac Pro. Oh! Let's see if that's true. Last year when the M1 version of the Mac Mini came out, I picked one up because I wanted to see how a $699 computer compared to my $13,000 Mac Pro. Now, as Marquez suggests, the base model Mac Pro, which actually is this one from a CPU standard, I just added a GPU, a bunch of RAM, and some storage, but this is the eight core Mac Pro. And in this video, I want to test out the new cheaper $599 M2 Mac Mini. And let's see how depressed I can get in this video, shall we? I've also owned the M1 MacBook Pro, again, base model, eight gig. So I thought it'd be fun to compare all three of these computers from a video editor's perspective. The size of this computer is just ridiculously small. There we go. I solved my problem. I now have a M2 Mac Pro. But in all seriousness, this, this is what I'm hoping for. Apple can come out with something like this that has a PCI slot in the back, plug it in right there, turns off the Intel chip and activates the M chip. Engineers, figure it out, I don't know. Alrighty, I got all of my computers set up. So as you can see, we have the Mac Pro back here. I have my M1 MacBook Pro right here. And then on this, we have the M2 Mac mini hooked up. So basically I just want to run a handful of real world tests comparing all three of these computers to see where they stand in terms of video editing. And the first test I think is fair is before we even jump into DaVinci Resolve. So just run a disk speed test. So first let's test the MacBook Pro. We're just gonna select the desktop and start. Reads are, reads are, uh, they, they were, they were solid. M1 MacBook Pro not that impressive. Now I actually want to test the M2 Mac Mini. Wow. Much better than the M1 MacBook Pro. Pretty consistent speeds running both times there. I don't know if it's consistent where it's an M1 and M2 thing or a Mac Mini versus MacBook Pro thing, but whatever SSD they're using in the Mac Mini is definitely a lot better performing than last year's MacBook Pro. Again, the base model 13. All right, so then there's my Mac Pro, which actually the internal drives that it came with, the 256 gigs from Apple, are some of the slowest SSDs in any Apple computer. Honestly, they're probably on par with the M1 MacBook Pros, but I can't even test those right now because I don't use that drive as a startup disk. I don't use that drive at all. I actually installed a two terabyte NVMe SSD, and so that's what we'll test as my desktop. But then I'm also gonna show you what I edit off of, which is a 16 terabyte OWC Excelsior 8M2. Well, that's a mouthful. All right, so first we're going to select just the desktop here. So this is that two terabyte NVMe. And we can see it is already kicking butt of both the other base model M1 and M2 machines. Rocking over 2000 megabytes per second. And this was an extremely cheap NVMe SSD. This was not an expensive one, uh, top of the line Samsung or something. I don't even remember the brand. I'll try to show the Amazon <laughs> listing, but I think I got it for like, 150, maybe 200 bucks for a two terabyte. But now let's check out the Excelsior drive. So I call my initial focus active. This is where I have all of my YouTube projects and everything I edit off of. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Over 5,000 writes and almost 7,000 read. So definitely hard drive performance. We can start this video off strong. It goes to the much more expensive Mac Pro. So something that I don't think really matters, but it kind of gets on my nerves each time and why I hate Adobe products, is like, I wanna see how long it takes to open DaVinci Resolve and get the project open on each computer. Because when I was setting up the M2 Mac Mini, I was like, this feels really fast to open up Resolve. All right, so first, the M1 MacBook Pro. Three, two, one, go. 
Project open. All of our media isn't linked, but I just wanted to get the project open. So 32 seconds for the M1 MacBook Pro. Not terrible. Now for my Mac Pro. Three, two, one, click. It's open, 38 seconds. So six seconds slower than the base M1 MacBook Pro. Again, am I actually gonna be really mad about a six second difference for opening a program? Not really, but still a little depressing. All right, and finally the M2 Mac Mini. Actually, I have to put it over here on the table. Three, two, one. Woo! 25 seconds. A whole seven seconds faster than the M1 MacBook Pro, 13 seconds faster than the Mac Pro for $599. So now that we have the actual project open, let's talk about the experience of editing on each computer. Now just for reference, this is a 48 hour film festival project that I did, I actually won best editing for it, like six and a half minutes or so. Pretty much every clip has noise reduction. Uh, the project file is 4960 by 2160, so it's a 4K project. All right, and so currently on the MacBook Pro, scrubbing through, everything is quite laggy. Every time I scrub the playhead, it's a solid probably five or six seconds before it jumps to the next clip. And if I were to play back anything with all my effects on, we're playing back at literally like between one and five frames. It's pretty rough. Now, if I turn off all of my effects, it actually plays at real time. And this has always impressed me about these base model M chips. They're just so ridiculously powerful. I wouldn't expect a computer of this price point to be able to play back uh, a project like this with files like this with full color grades on. Now, if I turn all my effects back on, what happens if I just change my playback to quarter resolution instead of full? It actually plays back pretty well. Let me go to a little bit more complex scene here. Again, the lag in between stuff. You never let me finish. As an editing experience, it's a little frustrating. This is where definitely that 16 gigs of RAM version or going up to like the M1 Pro, M M2 Pro, uh, the, the bigger uh, chips will will have its benefits. This video is sponsored by Detail. Have you ever been recording a video and wanted a second angle but either don't have another camera or don't want a bunch of cables lying around? Detail is a fantastic app that allows you to use your iPhone, iPads, or any iOS device as a secondary camera to your Mac, easily creating an awesome multi-cam experience. And not only can you record, but also edit and add different effects all within one app, allowing you to create amazing vertical and horizontal content for all social media platforms. And with their brand new AI tools, you can generate custom titles, keywords, transcribe your video, and even pull out highlights from long form content. Detail is currently free to download and play around with, and if you wanna get three months free before the pro plan comes out, definitely check out the link in the description below to check it out. Thanks Detail for sponsoring today's video. All right, so editing on the Mac Pro. So obviously this has been my primary machine for the past two and a half, three years or so. Again, the same exact project file, 4K, uh, currently our playback is set to full and scrubbing around the project there's really no lag going between clips I can scrub and it keeps up with me I can click around to different scenes and there's essentially no lag no matter what type of clip I go to it basically immediately plays back at full frame rates Full effects on, no issues, no real lag whatsoever. A lot of times if I'm working with 6K project files, that's where I'll have to go into my playback settings and go to like quarter resolution. But honestly, this project, like I edited it in a 4K timeline and at, point is and at no point was I having any issues. Even if I go to this scene, which we accidentally shot at a really high ISO and so is ridiculously noisy has a ton of noise reduction on it. But yeah, no, no issues playing back that whatsoever. So the editing experience on here has always been 
just really fun. Again, we have to realize like, yes, newer stuff is probably gonna be better and it's probably gonna be better for cheaper, but the thing that I currently have does what I need it to do with flying colors. And so that's what's really important to me. All right, so now we're finally on the M2 Mac Mini. Once again, same project file open. Clicking around, it's definitely way faster than the M1 MacBook Pro, but it still is lagging behind a little bit from my clicks. You can see me click on a scene and then it kind of takes a couple seconds to catch up, sometimes faster than others. I'm guessing depending on the complexity of the clip. If I go to play back anything. No one else could be couple of yours. What's that? It's struggling seemingly about the same as the uh, the M1 MacBook Pro maybe marginally better. And by the way, the reason I'm not like screen capturing any of the screens is because I find that hinders performance so much and sometimes the screen capture causes things to be even more laggy. And so I, kn I know you can't perfectly see what's going on on the screen. It's a more real world representation of how the computer is gonna perform when you're actually editing. Seems kind of frozen now, to be honest. First, just like the M1, let me turn off all the effects. All right, kind of caught up with us here. Instantly becomes way more responsive, jumping around to different clips, no more lag. And when I go to playback, it just immediately plays uh, at full frame rate. Honestly, it's been great, but even get, get some lanes. graphics going. Get yeah, no no issue whatsoever. If I turn back on effects, quarter res. Recently we won the largest jackpot on record. Bree, how has life changed since winning? Honestly, it's been great, but... Playing pretty much smoothly once it got to that lower third graphic. Uh, there was kind of some issues there. And again, there's no cache files, there's no proxy files. Uh, this is all just working with the raw, be raw files. So again, going with the 16 gigs of RAM, or the M2 actually has the option for the M2 Pro chip, I believe. I expect those to perform significantly better. But for a 599 machine, I mean, edit with the effects turned off, edit in quarter resolution before you export, and this machine is killer for anyone getting started in video editing and even intermediate. But speaking of finalizing, the final test I wanna run through is how fast can each machine export the final output? Because that is something that used to annoy the heck out of me on my old trash can Mac Pro because exports took forever. And when you're not very busy, that doesn't sound like a big deal. You just hit export and who cares if it takes a couple hours, you can just go do other stuff, come back and it's exporting. But when you have clients and deadlines and brands and all these different things and you're trying to output multiple pieces of content a day, you need things to export very quickly. So I am fascinated to know what the export time difference for all of the same project in the same settings will be. So since we're already here, let's start with the M2 Mac Mini. So we're simply just gonna go to the deliver page. I'm just gonna call this M2 Mac Mini. Just a nice H.264 file. Although some people are gonna debate me saying I should have done H.265. So I'll see what both is for, for all three computers. So, all right, and we're gonna hit render on both of those so it'll do them sequentially. And it's already chugging along. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other two computers here. All right, so deliver page, M1 MacBook Pro and render for MacBook Pro. And finally, my beloved Mac Pro, we got both H.264 and H.265 set up. We will hit render. Now we have all three machines going and we'll check back in a few minutes to see where everything is at. One eternity later. Holy good night. This is what I was talking about before of like, I don't have time to wait all day for render. All right. First, the MacBook Pro. Uh, it's actually still going on the H.265, but we can see that the H.264 render took 55 minutes, basically almost an hour to export the six and a half minute 
film. All right, what about the M2 Mac Mini? Again, this actually aired out a bunch because of some weird fusion clip. I don't fully blame the computer because I've had that issue every once in a while on my Mac Pro and every type of computers, but I had to restart it like three times before I finally would export the whole thing. Again, still going on the H.265, but the H.264 completed in 30 minutes, 2930 to be exact. So definitely a big improvement over the M1, but still a decent amount of time, and it's still got quite a bit of ways to go on the H.265 version, so if you're exporting a video in multiple formats, uh, multiple different parts of videos, uh, you're gonna be waiting a while for exports on these base model machines. And finally, how did the Mac Pro do? Yeah, it did the H.264 in five and a half minutes and the H.265 in just under five minutes. Yeah, so uh, I think it's safe to say that I am pretty happy with my Mac Pro. Okay, so here's the thing. Like a year ago, I made the Mac Mini M1 versus my Mac Pro video and they were kind of close. And I think one of the reasons is because I used just a handful of sample clips, I only did some basic editing and moving around. I've been very guilty of this in the past where I review a product and I get really excited because you know I'll drop in like a single 6K or 12K clip and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at what it can do. That's amazing. And that's, and that's fine for playing around and stuff like that. But when it comes to recommending something to really buy to use day in and out, these base level machines are incredible, don't get me wrong. And if you have the budget to go a couple steps up, your experience is just going to get better. And so it's still true that you can get probably better performance or equal performance to my Mac Pro or higher spec Mac Pros with like the Mac Studio, which costs half or a third of the price. But what a lot of people test with Geekbench scores and single like video export modes. They don't really speak to the use case of content creators and professionals who need to export multiple, multiple, multiple pieces of content almost every single day. And even this was just kind of one project and one kind of use case, but I hope that I was able to uh, shed light on what it's really like to work with all of these computers. Again, for $599, it's incredible. It, it's value, I don't wanna downplay what it can accomplish. The fact that I do run these tests alongside computers that are like 20 times its price. Very fun, very cool to see. I can feel the optimizations in DaVinci Resolve with how fast it boots up on the M2. The fact that you can play around on 4K timelines with a bunch of effects with not too much lag and set it to half or third playback resolution and you can have a great editing experience. Incredible, well done DaVinci Resolve, well done Apple. Uh, but I'm very happy with my Mac Pro and I don't feel as sad as I was worried about at the beginning of this video. So.